Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. Wait. Just wait. My name is Mark Belage. I'm president of TorontoEntrepreneurs.ca. Thanks for watching. I'm excited to have uh, somebody join me today. Uh, did you know that uh, statistics say that 80% of businesses that want to sell never do when they're put up for sale? Are you going to be in that group if you're looking to sell your business? Well, my name is Mark Belage. As I mentioned, I'm president of TorontoEntrepreneurs.ca. And today I'm joined by Bruce Singer, CEO and co-founder of Bizon Capital Corp. Hello there. So had a broad range of experience as a founder of a successful staffing company built from the ground up, and which was recently sold and has now started a company involved in mergers and acquisitions. So wanted to welcome Bruce today. Thanks for coming, Bruce. Marky, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. So I have a few questions for people who are thinking about selling their business or might have thought about that over the coming days or weeks or months. So what are the top two or three tips that you would give to someone looking to sell their business? Okay, first plan ahead okay um i'm even thinking it depends totally on the business but i'm even thinking some business could be uh, two years three years i think people don't really plan ahead so first thing is plan ahead that's the big one plan your exit strategy don't wait till the last minute probably first and foremost yeah yeah, yeah. next one the next one is i i would think it's it, know your expected outcome or determine your expected outcome because all of a sudden you're at the end of the game and you might see you didn't get what you really wanted and you have to start over again. So that's also in addition to the planning, if you're looking for, let's say a million dollars, if that's the number, then plan so you get the million dollars. You should really have a lock on your expected outcome. And the third thing is I'm a big believer in getting the right advisor or advisors on your team that really have your back and look, at, and look after your interests because in most respects, the buyer, it, and it depends. In most most circumstances, the potential buyer that we sold to private equity, they know more than I do. Okay, so if I had advisors, but I would I would you know would have beefed it up, and um, and they can protect your interests and have your back. So those are really probably there's others, but those are the three most important things that I would recommend. Okay, good. Recommend. So what were the what were the challenges? And uh, you mentioned about advisors, like. How, how were you able to find the advisors? Like what, what, um, what other challenges did you have? Well, the challenges are, the challenges are first, um, one of the things is the, the person that bought, uh, people that the private equity bought our company, they were always one step ahead of us. And so, so in terms of the challenge or a surprise, I call it, think, we thought we had a simple transaction. It went a, a lot longer. This thing took over a year. And we were not, we're not, we're not a fortune if I find a company, we're a simple company, but this thing went on for well over a year. So that was a challenge trying to keep tweaking and tweaking and keep tweaking and keep tweaking and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I don't know if it's a challenge, more of a surprise, you know, but the challenge is again, the challenge is really, again, is, is really was the length of time. And, and, and also one of the challenge was, is making sure that all, if you have partners and stakeholders is to make sure they're aligned early on in the game. Alignment is really important because if you have one key stakeholder or one partner or someone like that, that's out of, that's not in sync with you, that will slow down the deal tremendously and raise a lot of eyebrows and a lot of surprises. Again, it really all stems back to the planning and getting the right people, the advisor on your, on your, uh, on your team. I've heard that um, a lot of people uh, say after they sold their business that they were surprised at how long the process took. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And the smallest of itty bitty details, uh, it's really something. And like I said, we thought we had a simple one. There is no simple one. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. it, it, takes, it takes a tremendous amount of, uh, tremendous, it, it's, it's very distracting, took a tremendous amount of time, but that's what it is. So that's the challenge. And that's what I learned. And so if you had to do it all over again, any tips you might want to share to the entrepreneur community? Yeah, if I had to do it all over again, one is one is really is, is plan early. You know, that that's 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 the big one. Uh, plan everything early, plan everything way ahead of time. And the other thing too I would share is, and this is a tough one, don't get emotionally attached to your business. 
Okay. Looking yeah. back, looking back, what I did, I mean, I, we did pretty good. We, we did okay at the end. When it's all said, then we did good. But I, I wish I would have sold earlier on in my career. We had it for 25 years because I admit I got emotionally attached. Okay. I loved it. I loved the people. Um, and so I, 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 that's, that's one thing I would recommend is don't get emotionally attached. It's hard. And also, as the business grows, as the business evolves, the people on the bus it probably needs to change. And, and we did some changes, but we could have done a little better. And, and, and I think that and the thing needs to change and the process needs to change. I think you need to look at the people because that's ultimately, we had a service business. Ultimately, that's what they're going to buy in our business, a service business. So you got to look at your people. Who do you have on the bus for attention? These are the, all the things that need to be addressed. It's not just taking it and flipping it. Uh, it's really a really deep down, really going deep and really thinking about what's it going to take to generate maximum value. And it's not always about the numbers. There's tweaks. There's tweaks in there. And there's more to it than that. Again, you know, in only 10 minutes, we can talk about this for hours, but really it's, um, it gets back to planning. Okay, terrific. Thanks for so again, my name is Mark Blaise, president of TorontoEntrepreneurs.ca. I'm with uh, Bruce Singer, uh, Thank you, CEO and co-founder of Bizon Capital Corporation. Do you want to say any few things about uh, Bizon or how people can reach you also, Bruce? Yeah, I want to say about what Bizon Capital does is two things. Uh, because we learned about M&A, we, we acquire companies. So that's one of the things we do. Uh, we, buy small, buy, we buy small businesses. The second thing we do is we offer a CFO services division that puts CFOs out on assignment, part-time, fractional, interim uh, for companies that need that service. And if you want to contact me, you can feel free to reach me on LinkedIn. It's Bruce Singer, or you can look us up at bizoncapital.ca. Yeah, and it's Bizon with a Z as well. B-I-Z. Bizon 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 okay, sounds great. Thanks very much for joining. Bruce. Thank you, Mark. And, uh, look forward to staying in touch with you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Mark. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.